All right, so now we're outside. So I'm going to take a look at the outside housing. Uh, this is the post that I use. I have it removable, so that way what you see out here is without the top case on. So let's take a look. All right, so this housing <laughs> is actually really simple. This is really just the frame of it. Um, if you look right down here, this is one of those easy post systems. I'll post a link so you can get it. Essentially, that's just kind of hammered down into the ground. There is a hole drilled through. Down on the ground, there are two anchors put into the ground. These are one of those twist anchors that you have to twist to get out. However, you can't twist it enough because there is um, the bike chain, which is holding this down. So it and disables both of these from twisting. So that pretty much keeps this from getting pulled out of the ground. Um, there are bolts on here. You have to work pretty hard to get those um, bolts off. Um, but still, it's through the post hire, so that doesn't matter. I do have a piece of rebar here. This got really windy this Halloween. That just kind of kept it from shaking a little bit. Um, I'm going to have to find out a better way to just kind of keep it still. Looking up top, this is a sheet of plywood that I have treated here. Probably going to look into getting a piece of composite just so it doesn't have uh, the kind of warp factor but it is just screwed into the top of the 4x4 post. All of this I have treated and painted black, so that way um, it kind of was a little more resistant to the weather and it's not such an eyesore in the yard. Um, if you look here, there are two holes on either side. That's where the locks go through to hold everything, um, to hold the top piece down to this. And if you look, they're kind of rudely drilled holes that uh, the bottom of the bolts come through and since they're wing nuts it's kind of drilled in so the wing nut goes in and is not able to be turned and twisted off um, so what that does is it holds the wing nuts in and it secures the top rubbermaid container onto the actual post uh, and this really did a great job keeping everything locked down all right, so let's go back inside and take a look at the housing. Okay, so here's a look at the top of the housing. If you look close, it's nothing special. It's all black, really self-contained. There's only one cord that comes out of this and it has a pretty decent length on it. This is a cord that I use. It goes straight down the post, plugs in. I have a nice amount of wiggle room if I need to connect things uh, smoothly. If you look closer at the face of the housing, you will see that there is pure glass here and there is clear construction adhesive that I use. I use clear just to make it look nice and pretty um, and that goes all the way around. You can see that it is sealed completely just by how it is uh, darker black and looks squished there. Around the top just to keep it nice and clean, I just put a bead around um, over here it looks a little better, but as it goes around, that's just another layer of protection to make sure that everything is sealed up nice and tight. You can see it kind of down here on the bottom of this Tupperware top. I just have weather stripping that goes in between that kind of smushes through. That's just another way to try to keep it off of the plate. I don't care if it goes on the outside, just off of this plate to keep that nice and dry if for some reason there was a rain shower that occurred. Each one, each side has three bolts that go through. And then on the bottom of the bolt is a simple wing nut. These wing nuts, um, you don't need to get them super tight, but I do keep them in a nice flat orientation this way because when I go to put that on the post outside, when it sits into the post, this will go through the hole and these two will sit um, kind of notched into that plywood so it's unable to spin and be taken off um, as another way to keep everything secure. On the post outside, you also saw that there were um, holes for locks. This is the lock that I use. I use a master lock, simple with the key, spend a little extra and it's a lot easier to get on and off. You don't have to be fooling around with the combination. 
it just kind of reaches up underneath. Let me do this side. Uh, just keeps, reaches up underneath, goes through this one hole. That will go through the second hole in the plywood and it will lock nice and tight. So I'm going to undo these and so I can show you what the inside of this case looks like. All right, so I have the top off here. Uh, if you look, this is really nothing special. It is just a Tupperware container. I can look and see if I can find the size that I got. Um, but essentially it was just a clear container and I took black spray paint and I spray painted the inside of it to keep this nice and um, dark. So that way when the projector turns on, it doesn't have a glowing bright orb in the middle of the yard. Um, it also, I did the inside so that way the outside, if it gets scratched or weathered, it's not going to be, you know, chipping off and all of that. Um, along the side, I snipped for the bolts, snipped a little bit, drilled the holes through so that way the bolts will sit through real nice and tight. You can now see the weather stripping really clean on this. This helped for when the screws went through to try to keep that nice and solid. Once again, you don't have to go super tight when you put this on, but you wanna make sure that it's pretty tight um, just to um, keep everything sealed out. So underneath, this is a piece of plywood that is the same exact size as what I have out in the yard. There's really no method to the madness. I just kind of cut it out so that way it was nice and snug to the shape of the Tupperware container and um, gave me enough room to get my uh, screw holes drilled in. On top of this, I have the projector mounted. I needed to angle it down pretty severe. So I have a little wedge of wood there that the back end of the projector sits on. And then once I got everything in place like I liked, I just took some outdoor decking screws, whatever I had on hand, and I just kind of drilled it down so it's snug on the projector. So if I wiggle the projector, there's going to be very little to no movement. That's really important because you want this to be able to be moved in and out every day um, so that way you don't have to worry about theft overnight and um, bad weather like if there's a really good storm coming um, then I'm just pulling it inside because nobody's going to be out there watching it anyway um, so that is what the projector looks like over here I have my media player it's plugged in with the HDMI cable kind of curled up plugged into the back I simply took some blue painter's tape that I had on hand and just kind of wrapped it over top. I'll peel it off so you can get a look at what the brand is. Whoop, never mind. All right, so I believe it's an Amica. There you go, HD player. Um, I'm going to have to look at it because I just upgraded my uh, projector so I'm actually going to leave this out and put the new projector in and it is a 4k projector so I'm pretty sure that's not going to support it so I'm going to have to um, look for another media player or another option um, but on the back I just have it plugged in I have an extension cord here it is a uh, three banger which was all that I needed for this setup the three banger kind of comes out that keeps all these plugs nice and dry and tight. Over here I have an outdoor, it's actually a waterproof speaker, um, but I have it in this case just to keep everything clear. It's plugged into power and the audio out of my projector. This is what I use for the majority of the time, so that way it's nice and decent enough that you can hear it from the sidewalk, but not super loud where you are listening to it inside my neighbor's houses. Eventually, I'm going to, uh, for Christmas, put in my FM transmitter, and that's just going to go back into one of these, you know, a section in here, uh, so I have everything transmitted nice. The wire that comes out, here's the antenna that comes out. The antenna will kind of go off and out, probably wrapped around the metal post at the bottom to try to hopefully get a little more range on it and that will be kind of set up for my um, sound. Just to try to keep it 
for the sidewalk as well, I have an audio splitter. So this audio splitter will go out to my speaker and to the FM transmitter so that, you know, people can use both of them. If it's a nice day and they want to be outside or if they just want to kind of hunker down in their car as they um, are driving by. So this is really the setup for the outdoor housing that I have. This is the second setup. And I really do prefer this setup as opposed to my first one. And now I'll show you my first setup that I had for many years. All right, so this guy here was my first setup that I had. This I used for many years really successfully, but you can see it is definitely size difference, very different uh, than what we had before. This is why I had to take it and hide it behind a tombstone. But honestly, in the winter, it was really hard to hide it. So I decided to paint it white, hopefully that there was, hoping that there was snow on the ground and it would hide it a bit. It really was clunky, but it did the job. And it actually, I felt a little more secure with this one versus my original one. Let's take a look at it. First, you can see that it was built on a tilt. And the reason for that was the tilt in my yard. The front door was held on by two latches with locks. So it would just kind of come through. It would spin over and it would lock. And if you look, you'll see one down at the bottom. One that I lost the key for, from. So hopefully I can find that so I can reuse the lock. On the inside, nothing really special. Um, so right here, I have a plexiglass window. The plexiglass window, I thought it would be cheap. It would be nice and nobody could come in and kind of smash it and get in. Um, however, for some reason, this actually held back a lot of the light and made the image dimmer on the house than the pure glass did. So that's why I switched over to pure glass with this last one. But if you wanted to do the pure glass, as you can see, I cut through a hole in the front, and then on the back is where I did the adhesive, uh, construction adhesive to get that nice and solid on here. In the inside, you'll see that there is a um, piece for the projector. Now it's kind of hard because this is on a tilt. Let me straighten that up. Now you can see that that shelf was actually on a angle where in this one i just kind of threw a chunk of wood this one i had to um, actually change around and try to mount those little two by four or two by three pieces um, to hold it it was kind of a pain but it worked now because this was permanent in the yard i had to move the projector in and out just about every night so I put pencil markings on here and those pencil markings helped me line it up as close as possible. This little notch here was for the center foot on the projector. That one, it took me a year or two to figure out, but that one actually was the most helpful mark. So if you are doing something that it has it in and out, I really recommend a smaller mark than trying to figure out the sides. Every night though, unfortunately, I had to fool around with getting it lined up. It took a lot of time where um, the new model, I can just kind of wiggle and maneuver that post and it is perfect. It really takes me about a minute or two minutes to get that out there on and then back inside. Down here in the bottom, this was actually one of my favorite designs of this. I have just two two by threes screwed in here and down underneath in these two spots is where I had the yard anchors. So the yard anchors were down underneath and then I used a ratchet strap to strap from one over to the others and you could really crank that down and it was really solid down in here. So each year when I would set this up in the yard, it was pretty close to the same spot because I just left the yard anchors. So I got it pretty close to the same spot every year, but with the ground kind of settling and moving, I used to have to shim it a little bit 
you know, wedge a little bit of wood underneath the um, sides just to get it to be nice and stable. And um, it wasn't the best, but it did work. So I recommend if you are building one of these, it will work. Um, but I do recommend this new post style um, that I did for the housing. This has been a lot easier to use and maneuver. Just to go off the basics here, I used a, I believe it's half inch or three quarter um, plywood on the outside. I just got the two by two panels. It just made it easier to kind of um, stitch together. The face, I did go for the, the door. I went for a longer panel um, just um, because of the movement in and out. To build it, I really just made um, the uprights of the frame and I left the bottom posts, I left those pretty long and then I just trimmed them when I got them out there so that way it matched how the hill went and how the yard was at that, at that place. On the inside up here, I had a little shelf. This is actually where I kind of wedged my speaker, where I put the FM transmitter and that type of um, things. Over here, I just have two simple hinges mounted on the inside so they can't be unscrewed. I have the inside hinges mount, mounted here as well. All of the screws that I used for the exterior, I used the decking screws, which have the square hole. It's just a little harder to come by for a bit. Usually people are not prepared with that bit if they're coming to take something apart. Honestly, if they're coming to take this thing apart, they deserve the projector. So this was the original housing. It works, but I do suggest going with this post model. It's easier to get in and out. It's less of a, you know, sore uh, in your yard. And I think overall you're going to be a lot happier with this setup versus your other one. Hopefully also your housing will not need to be so high off the ground because I'm on that hill. That's why mine is so tall and high up and has so much dead space. Um, hopefully yours is smaller where maybe one of these types of housings is most appropriate for you. I wish you luck on your housings. If you come up with something different or if you have suggestions for me, please put that in the comment section. I would love to hear it. I'm always trying to adapt and make things a little bit easier on myself. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to put them in the comments or reach out to me and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you again and thanks for watching. Oh.